Hello everyone, today we'll be discussing Campus Movie Fest and the Proud to Be Me campaign. Stay with us. Welcome to this edition of LTV News. I'm Benjamin Zander. And I'm Egypt Paras. Let's get started. Students may have noticed a surplus of film equipment around campus this past week, whether it be a camera in front of Lozier Hall or a tripod saving a seat at the Student Center. Eager student actors, directors, and writers all united this week for this year's annual Campus Movie Fest. This is the third year in a row that the festival is featured here at TCNJ. Campus Movie Fest, also known as CMF, is the world's largest student film festival and is a way for college students to get their creative juices flowing and have an artistic release separate from the stresses of their classes. CMF was started in 2001 by four students at Emory University. These CMF founders supplied camcorders and Apple laptops to their classmates and challenged them to make a short film in seven days. Now in 2015, more than 500,000 college students have taken the challenge and competed in CMF over the years. CMF 2015 launched this year on April 15th at the Student Center. Everyone involved went to work immediately with original scripts, independent filming schedules, and meticulous editing. CMF is a hefty workload for all students involved. Junior communications major Maria Pichenza said, quote, A lot of effort was put into this really quick one-week period. But once you see your finished product, you really feel a sense of accomplishment and pride. The top 16 student films will premiere at TCNJ's Red Carpet Showcase. The top four films will then be showcased in Los Angeles at CMF Hollywood to compete for $150,000 in cash, prizes, and professional opportunities. You can watch the films at Kendall Hall on April 28th. Doors open at 7 p.m., show starts at 7.30. Lions Television would like to wish all the students from the college the best of luck. From April 20th, 2015 to April 24th, NEDA, the National Eating Disorders Association, is holding the hashtag Proud to Be Me campaign to build a nation where, quote, confidence rules. Over the course of the week, people post pictures to social media, such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc., with the hashtag Proud to Be Me or Proud to Be Me TCNJ. The schedule goes as follows Day one, no filter selfie. Day two, write, quote, today is beautiful because of you. On an index card and tag a friend or a few when posting it. Day three, take a photo of something that makes you the most confident. Day four, post a picture of your passion. What do you love to do? Day five, post a picture of someone who inspires you. A wide variety of people participated in the five-day photo challenge, from students to faculty, FYE, to even Dave Muha, the god himself. Junior communication studies major Emily Kay says, quote, it's a great way to promote positive images on social media. People often tear themselves and each other down online, and the campaign brings a much-needed dose of positive energy, even if it's only for the week. Now, I'd like to take this moment to give a quick thank you to my co-anchor, EJ, and the members of LTV, and to all of our viewers for making me hashtag proud to be me. And now we will take a look at what happened during the PB&J race on Wednesday, April 8th. Um, the PB&J race was this um, huge like, competition that we had. This is our second year that we've done it. We have a range from like 10 to 15. This year was 16, actually. Team sign up of five people per team. We got 80 students from different organizations on campus to come together as a campus group and make sandwiches. And so it was a very communal spirit that was um, happening during the event. And we also got to show people what the problems are in our community, which was a big thing that we wanted to push this year, the awareness, um, because some people aren't aware of how privileged we are to have the access to Ike where we can swipe in and eat as much as we want. And some people in the community don't have that opportunity to get food like we do. So the first round we had where certain teams only had jelly or only had peanut butter and then they were allowed to work with other teams um, in order to make the 20 sandwiches that we had them make. Um, the second round was they had like a phys different physical abilities. So one team had to kneel, um, one team had to have one eye shut, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So it like showed that in society like people aren't necessarily always have equal opportunities. The third round was trying to make it more fun. Everyone loved this round last year, so we made a creativity round where they basically had 
um, four slices of white bread and they got to make whatever kind of designs that they wanted to. This round we focused on nutrition and how you know uh, healthier options are typically more expensive so it's more difficult for people with a lower income to you know afford this. And then the last round was basically use your resources. Just this one was the one where we made it the race that everyone usually enjoys the most. Yeah. It was who could make the most sandwiches in the last round with, I think we had yeah, seven minutes. Yeah. So it's basically, we ended up making 1,353 sandwiches this year. Probably the biggest reaction that we got was when we went to Ark Mercer mm -hmm. and donated, um, probably, how many? Probably like 800. Yeah, like probably about sandwiches. 800 sandwiches. <laughs> um, they were so excited. And yeah. she like gave us both hugs. She was like, thank you so much for just thinking about us. And prior to that, when we were trying to figure out where else to donate, because last year we only had 956, this year we had 400 more sandwiches. Um, we wanted to donate to multiple. So um, when we were looking, I called this one place called Mercer Street Friends. And even she was like, thank you so much for thinking about us. Here's like three different options that you can send these sandwiches to. We probably won't be running it next year, yeah. but we're hoping to expand it even further because um, I've gotten feedback from students who participated and they want the opportunity to have more clubs to get involved because there's such a big push and want for this event on campus. So make it bigger and better. Let's get back to the remainder of our discussion. April 22nd is Earth Day, an event held annually worldwide to demonstrate support for environmental protection and for the well-being of our planet. In honor of the important event, TCNJ's environmental club, Water Watch, is sponsoring Earth Week along with other organizations on campus, such as Humanitarian Yoga, Circle K, the Bonner Environmental Team, and TCNJ Net Impact. Throughout the week of April 20th, the organizations made events to help raise awareness of Earth Week. Beginning on Monday, the photo campaign for change, hashtag TCNJ Earth, kicked off along with a business seminar regarding the environment's effect on business. On Tuesday, there was an Earth Day cake pop sale along with outdoor yoga. Wednesday features a professor panel on climate change and the initiation of sustainability education. Circle K will be sponsoring an event regarding recycling information and will also be holding a dirt cup giveaway on Thursday. To wrap up Earth Week on Friday, a campus-wide cleanup will start at 12 p.m. All participants will meet in front of the stud and work together to better the school's appearance and to protect the environment in general. Freshman Kathleen Larkin only had positive things to say about Earth Week by saying, quote, I believe we should protect our planet as much as we can. We should educate ourselves and our peers to spread awareness of Earth Week and to better safeguard the environment. Earth Week encourages students to live a greener lifestyle, and it's the goal of all involved that students pay more attention to the environment as a result of Earth Week. Last Wednesday, April 15th, was Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uniquely, this specific year is a double anniversary, as April 24th is the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. To commemorate the double anniversary, the Department of Holocaust and Genocide Studies and Hillel, which is the Jewish Student Union, co-hosted a screening of Watchers of the Sky, a documentary about Raphael Lemkin, the man who created the word genocide. Inspired by Samantha Power's Pulitzer Prize winning book, A Problem from Hell, Watchers of the Sky takes you on a journey from Nuremberg to The Hague and from Bosnia to Darfur, as well as poses the question of why is the killing of a million lesser than the killing of a single individual? Speaking at the event was Dr. Cynthia Passis, the coordinator of the Holocaust and Genocide Studies Program, and Dr. Morton Winston, professor of philosophy, and me, the Hillel freshman representative, talking about my gap year in Israel and experiencing Yom HaShoah there. Now, something they do in Israel on Yom HaShoah, as well as Yom HaZikaron, Israel's Memorial Day dedicated to fallen soldiers, which actually takes place today, is a two-minute siren, which is heard throughout the entire country. During this siren, literally everyone in the country is silent. And if you're in a car, you get out and bow your head in respect. Well, that's all we have for this week on LTV News. If you would like to join Lions Television, email us at ltv at tcnj.edu or like us on Facebook. For all of us here at Lions Television, I'm Egypt Cross. And I'm Benjamin Zander. We'll see you next week.